afternoon, episode 15 in our series two now of our business blondes. And I'm really excited. We're now in week two of 2021. And um, you can see here we've got a fabulous guest here, uh, Rara Plumtra. And um, I'm going to introduce you to Rara in a minute. But I want to sort of tease you a little bit before we go to Rara. And also then we're going to, um, we're going to have a little chat with our um, our business blondes first. So Rara has been on an amazing, quite phenomenal journey in life. Born in Africa, went into the fashion industry, um, had a very um, privileged life. I would, I would like to say, he had a great life with as a mom and and as a wife, and then had a very shocking change in her life, which has turned her life into probably the happiest years. But she went through that adversity, and we're going to be talking about that. Is there are a lot of people that are having to pivot and change their lives and maybe things happen to them out of their own control. So I think, you know, stay tuned to this. This is going to be a really interesting story and some great life lessons that Rara is going to share. So before we come to Rara, hi, Carol. Uh, Carol Ann, what's your week been telling you then? What's it been like? I love the word pivot. It seems to be the, the word du jour. And uh, I like the fact that everyone that I'm talking to is pivoting to positivity. What a great testament to the human spirit. It's dark out the window. It's dark in the in dark times we're living in. The newspapers and the headlines couldn't be hollering more horror stories. And yet people are pivoting to positivity. I'll get my words out in a minute. And uh, and I just think it's amazing. I'm getting so many inquiries. People are saying I want to really change my life this year. You would think we're in California with the sun shining. It's absolutely I just think people are being really resilient, really facing in, leaning in, saying, right, instead of going down, I'm going up. And I think that's the message I'm getting. Let's use this time to change our lives, get better, get fitter, get focused on what we want from the year ahead. And nothing's stopping some people. I just think it's amazing. It really is. And I agree with you about the news. I'm waking up at the moment at 4.30 every morning. I don't know if that's hormone-related or something. I, I, I go downstairs, I lie on the sofa and I think I'll just put something really boring on so I'll hopefully snooze for a few hours and I tend to put the news on. God, I just cannot believe. I cannot believe how negative. There are some really amazing things being achieved and I'm desperate. So this is our this is a good news channel that people are tuning in to hear. Um, because it is a, there is a, the human spirit. It's just bloody phenomenal, isn't it? And I love it. Yes, thank you. Follow on from that. How's your week been? Um, oh, I love it. I, I think you know we are seeing real positivity, and I think some of that is that we've been waiting, haven't we, for such a long time? It's like it's almost over. It's almost over, and now we're going. Well, hold on, we can't control that. We can't control when we're going to come out. We can't control what's going to happen. So the time to live is right now. So let's stop waiting for what's going to be, and let's start designing what it is that we want. Because the only thing that we can really control is um, the things in our gift, you know, worry doesn't change anything, but it does change us. And I think for me, that's what I'm seeing. I've had some amazing, amazing conversations this week and just really grateful for the the life I get to live, the, you know, the people I get to meet, the stories that I get to hear and the um, chance to be part of people's journey is just priceless. And I think you've just got to be grateful for those moments and, and like live in the now. And, and I'm seeing a lot more people do that, which I think is fantastic. Listen, Kim, you know, I know we're going to be talking about rah-rah and adversity, but, you know, you really inspire us all the time because, you know, things haven't always been easy for you. And you've come out of corporate, reinvented yourself, built your brand, you know, kept that focus and that discipline and got out of your comfort zone and stayed positive all the time. So if there was a role model for that, um, you certainly do shine on that. So, um, yeah, it is possible, everyone, anybody that's listening is feeling a bit down. So, Sam, how about yourself? What's your, your week? Apart from the fact that you were very worried when you came on, you were just coming, stepped in from the rain. <laughs> the weather is awful in Essex, absolutely awful. But like Caroline said, the vibes are positive. And the business vibes, everybody that I'm speaking to this week, you know, personally, they may be feeling a little bit blue. The Monday blues are coming, apparently. There's a thing, apparently, on Monday. It's called the Monday blues. This Monday is the worst Monday of the year. But despite that, business is so positive. You know, people are thinking 2021 is not going to beat me. I'm up for it. I'm up for the challenge. So I, Anne and Kim, I think it's 
a wonderful start to the new year, despite everything that's been thrown against it. I can't wait to hear what Rara is going to tell us about adversity and change. I'm really excited. So welcome, Rara. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I think just building on from this, I think a lot of people identify themselves with their financial position. They think that they identify themselves by their job title or how well their job's doing. And I think probably collectively, we've all got stories about the human spirit and how if we purely focus on what we haven't got um, and, and spend our life almost in the path, I love the saying, I have Oprah Winfrey says that forgiveness is letting go of what the path should have been. And to me, uh, Rara absolutely epitomizes that. So Rara, welcome to our show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for having me. It's an honor. Oh, it's lovely. So Rara, I introduced you at the beginning of somebody um, who, you know, ha had, a, had a really interesting life. You've obviously been brought up very positively. You're well connected as a lady. You're beautiful. You have a beautiful Thank spirit. Um, but tell us about, it's only six years ago, isn't it, when your life changed? Yes, my, my life changed. I arrived in London with five pounds in my pocket. Um, and my daughter asked to go up the Shard. And I had two wonderful friends who looked after me in that time. And um, I remember thinking, I don't know really how I'm going to pay for the lunch up the Shard because my daughter was off to university the following day. And um, I knew that she had money in her bank account, <laughs> but I was not going to go there. So we get to the Shard and I have this extraordinary moment where I think, well, I don't know really how I'm going to pay for lunch. But we had the most beautiful day and everything in that was whole. We, we had three hours up there and I, thank goodness one of my cards pressed in and, and, it, and it went. So I was, I was safe in that, that I had paid for the lunch. But it, it started me on the journey. What actually happened? Um, you know, I've listened to a brilliant podcast that, um, the other day and I know you're very open and I think that really helps people. What actually happened? What was it well, that changed? Well, what, yeah, well, one day, um, about 13 years ago, I held on to my house for a certain amount of time. But one day, about 13 years ago, my husband came home and said, um, well, I thought we had a perfect life and came home and said, I'm off. And I said, can I come too?" slightly? And um, he said, no, 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 I found somebody else. And I think for us all, that was a huge shock and um, really um, devastating. And the children were wonderful in it. They were obviously angry and cross, but we managed to get through that. And as I explained, I think before that, the one thing that really terrified me was my heart. I was madly in love with him and the, my heart had this pain and it lasted for nearly three months. I could have pulled my heart out and it's called something. I don't know what it is called. I should really look it up. Um, and, it, and it was complete anxiety that, you know, the devastation, it's like a bereavement. And um, but it, the lovely thing now is it's all come on and, you know, I'm it, he's the father of my children and I absolutely adore my children and we're good friends. So that's the main thing. It's all come round. But yes, it's six years ago I ended up and thinking, what did I what could I do? I hadn't worked within the marriage. Uh, so, I mean, I'd done a small job in the marriage and I really was a wife for that, that period of time. My daughter was. 16 and my my sons were 20 and 21 and um it it came as such a blow that i just had to move forward in some way so i arrived in london and the girlfriend i was living with said let's get your cv together and my cv read you've been a housewife <laughs> you've put flowers in a vase and looked after your children um but in fact you've done absolutely nothing in the work ethic um, and I, ha I was lucky enough to have the first franchise of the body shop years ago. And in the area that I was living in, which was um, Clapham, there's a wonderful little gift shop. And one day I walked in about three days after I'd arrived because I slept for, on and off for about three days through the trauma. And um, I walked in and said, is there any chance of having a weekend job? And that is how my journey started. Um, she very sweetly gave me a weekend job. I'm ever grateful to her. And um, it took me back to my beginnings where I was used to being in a shop, I think. So it, it was meant. And yeah. I remember there's a comment, wonderful comment that everybody says, 
it, everything is for a reason. And I kept on trying to think what reason, what, what is this reason? And I now know the reason because my journey has been just incredible. So now if I was to sort of put you into three individual buckets, you've got you as a phenomenal connector and you work with clients, um, you connect them to very relevant, qualified people and, and you really lend yourself to that beautifully and I've experienced that. But you also, from your life experiences, want to help other women and I think, you know, Carol Ann's got some questions around this and some thoughts, but other women who find themselves in this disempowered life where they have been looked after and in a way you know i really relate to it because even even though i'm a businesswoman thomas actually and i was working all the time thomas used to look after all our money you know sometimes you do have demarcation in roles don't you so you yeah, know, definitely. Any woman should be terribly embarrassed by that but i think it's really interesting when you have this pro bono work that you do to help divorced women and then on the other on the other side of it you are very supportive around homelessness so Caroline, I see your microphone's opened up. So. Yeah, um, you know, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't brag to anyone, I can't read or write. Yeah, a lot of women say, oh, I know nothing about money as if it's kind of cute. And I don't think it is cute. I think it's very dangerous. And I think that anyone who leads a sort of a passenger existence in life instead of being in the driving seat of their life is coming, is heading for a crash because we can't outsource our well-being and our, our fundamental security, the roof over our head, the food that's on the table, to someone else because it's very precarious. So how, how Rara, do you get women to engage in something which they're usually like ostriches, oh, I don't, he does all that. Uh, how do you get them to buy in to having some kind of wealth IQ here? Well, I'm a great believer in that. I think we should, I know we, we learn a lot of things at school, but I think it should be more and more taught in schools. And I have a great um a great uh, belief that i think it will be i think finance for women should be taught at a very early stage and i, I even whether it's just your pocket money or whatever i i was left actually and my husband did run me exactly like that and um i was left in a in a stage of complete bewilderment because obviously the, it it was very complicated so i think if i'm being honest i think it should be taught in education in schools very early now because I think if you're going to be an independent woman and I do believe that generations are becoming much more the woman and the man are working because you can't afford not to um, I think it is very important that the female takes on the financial side as well and knows exactly what's going on really. So where do you, where do you come in to help women who are in this situation? Oh I see I, I, I basically um, I, I send them to people that I, I feel that are, 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 are worthy. Um, I, when they have a financial problem, I have wonderful connections around me that I then put them to different lawyers in different ways. Um, obviously, there's different sides to the financial side of the whole thing. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's not only um, the person who has got the finance, it's, it's obviously the husband who's trying to keep his own finance so there's a lot of complications so i've got some wonderful lawyers i work with um over the financial scenario i do not give it financial advice okay. personally mm -hmm. um but um in my own in my own situation obviously the financial side was a complete worry all on a regular basis and um it's trying to make those stepping stones go forward so you are actually moving forward in your own life and being able to manage and that was complicated it's six mm -hmm. years ago yeah, it's interesting. You know, when Hannah, my daughter now, who's 28, when she was 16, left school and was going to college, I got her to write down her year's costs. I got her to think about her tampons, her clothes, her friends that she wants to buy presents for, everything, everything. And she came to me and told me how much money that is. And of course, normally, as a mum, you know, you're saying, oh, so your friend needs a present, here's the money, you want your tampons, shampoo, everything. And she came to me and I think it... I can't remember how much it came to, but it was quite a lot of money. We divided it up between 12 months, and it came to £165 a month. And I said to her, I'm going to give you £165 a month, Hannah. And at 16, a lot of people said, my goodness, Penny, that's a lot of money. But I, she never came to me for another penny. That was it. Anything extra she needed that wasn't in that budget, she had to earn it. So I think there is a thing about parental um, attitudes towards money, because there's a lot of people who do not 
empower their children to understand money. No, and I think I think that's what I'm. I really believe it should be taught now. I, I really do think it's and make. I mean, I think not only men don't only run the roost, and I think women do a, a huge job. And I think financially we are at times, certainly of my generation, at times with our heads in the sand about finance. And I'm the first person to put my hand up there. Yeah, Kim, you asked a question. I think there. Yeah, so so I think it's all fascinating, and I agree. I think you know we we have a responsibility to teach people about finances, and I spent twenty odd years in in the uh, financial services industry, having seen both sides of that and, and what it does. And, and worryingly, now there is a significant number of teenagers who end up homeless because they get turfed out at sixteen because they've irritated their parents, but they don't know how to budget. So I think there is. I think there's a whole piece around how do we how do we better educate people around their around their strengths because I, I think what was for me all of it's been interesting and I'm loving the debate at Rara, but one of the things you said was I'd only been a mum um, and I think we give ourselves a label don't we we go well I, you know I've just, I've just been a mum I spent a lot of years in a hairdresser um, but actually you learn so much about leadership and about um, Bringing up, bringing up new people <laughs> and educating them and, and bring them to life gives you life skills that are so transferable into any organization. And it's, it's so how do you think we can better help people change the labels they use? Well, basically, I don't think you can change your label. I think you have to change your mind and your mindset. And when we go back to what Caroline said, you need the confidence to be able to move forward. And that is what's so difficult when you're in a situation of homelessness or a divorce situation, whether you're male or female, because a lot of men end up in the same situation. It's immaterial, but I do feel that. I feel that, that the confidence to go forward is, a, is huge, really, to, to go, you know, to make you, to make you warm and welcoming, to be able to have your, it, it, at times you, f you don't flow right and you have your you live in your mind as you we all know and especially at this sort of time of when everybody's worrying about it in in covid my my thing is now is it's so so difficult to do those stepping stones and i feel so strongly and i think i talked about this the other day i feel so strongly these are the times when you think you're going to be furloughed or you're going to be um uh given notice is often sometimes it's good to set up your own little business. Tiny though it may be, five pounds in your pocket you may have. But before you're given the notice, when you are given notice, you can turn around and say, well, actually, I've set my own business up. And it can give you time to think about how to do that and where to do it and how to communicate, you know, your own mind into wanting to do it. And I'm a great believer. I had a girl the other day who came to me and said, what do you think? I'm thinking about it. I know I'm going to lose my job. And I said, well, my advice to you, but maybe your parents would be saying, don't do it. My advice to you would be to set up your own business, quietly, small, wait and see. You don't have to do much about it for six months until you know. And then you've got something when somebody turns around and says, oh, dear, I'm so sorry you've lost your job. You've got something positive to be able to say. So you went on that journey, Rara. I mean, you learned to be a businesswoman. Although I know you said to me, I'm not a businesswoman. No. But you, you, you ask for invoices and you do have clients and I think you are a businesswoman. And so you went on that journey. So, you know, how, how did you go on that journey to become a businesswoman from, from being a housewife? I, um, I was very lucky. I had very, very kind people around me. I set up two networking businesses. And I then set up my connections business, which I love today. And then I was, I was working with a law firm in London. And um, because I, my heart is in helping people. And they said, why don't you set up a small divorce angel area? And here I was setting up yet another business thinking, well, but because I had the contacts from my networking business, it was quite easy to, to do. And now we, I, I work with a girlfriend of mine and do pro bono work. So we help people regularly um, in different formats. And now it's really word of mouth. We work closely with divorce lawyers and, it, and, and obviously the client. And we're literally in that, 
position where in privacy somebody can talk to you day in day out um, and know it's going to go away you know know that they've got somebody that they can talk to in it and I think it's really important that um, that you have the security and the confidence again it's about confidence to be able to move forward yeah and gather up all the skills i mean you must have gone on a huge journey of gathering up skills sam you're, you're certainly someone who helps business people have skills um i think this, this has been really interesting and i agree with education and i think that i mean i've got a 16 year old son upstairs and yeah to teach him the value of money for a start um, but also how to manage money and you know in in about six months time he's going to be going out into the next chapter of his life and with what and you know with what knowledge and that's down to me I feel as a parent because certainly the education system is not supporting that for, for young males or females um, as, as well as many other things like you know how to read a profit and loss or balance sheet and those sorts of things but don't get me started on education because that's a big, a big thing that I'd love to get involved in in in, fu in the future. Um, but what really fascinates me, Rara, is um, I see within my SME network and the clients that I work with is how people are so reluctant to change and very fearful of change. And coming from lots of periods of change in your life, and I know it's something that you're really passionate about helping you know, young men and women with, how do you encourage and what are the top tips towards managing change and actually embracing change rather than being fearful of it? Well, I think you have to realise your journey. So I try, anybody who's introduced to me, obviously I can't at the moment, but anybody who's introduced to you and I do now and do it on Zoom, I normally meet them. I think it's a really important thing to get eye on eye contact. And um, then we can work out how to go forward. And I think the most important thing in that is to, I had no confidence, I have to tell you, I had absolutely not, and I still, you know, and the word safe keeps on coming back. I didn't feel safe. I felt safe with the family I was living with. I, I As I walked in that door, I couldn't tell you how safe I felt. But as soon as I walked out that door, I felt very unsafe and I think we, we we talk about feeling safe and i think that's the journey because you need to get the person to feel safe again and to feel um worthy and have confidence and you can only do that with kindness and listening and i think i'm a great talker so i have to shut shut my mouth a bit but i i think it is about giving them the confidence to 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 step forward but you need to listen to their stories and everybody as you know all of you everybody's got a story and i think some of the stories that we've that i've heard over the time has been extraordinary really extraordinary um and i i seem i love the young and i seem to be dealing more and more in the young space as well so you know and that frightens me a bit because i feel sad for that but um and i think i'm i might be mistaken i think um a lot of the the internet and um the telephone systems and all this screening um, it has made it difficult for a lot of the young. I really do believe that. And I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't know anyhow. Um, I just wanted to add there, Rara, that I think really, really laser listening to someone is an act of love. And we are, as human beings, starved of being properly heard and listened to. We're all guilty of it, shouting, have you got your homework done? And what's the thing? Shouting things through rooms to people, but never actually sitting down and saying, how are you really? And to really listen intently with laser listening and to really get someone is an absolute joy and privilege. And when you feel got and held, it's like a, you feel, wow, at last, someone's bothered to hear my story or just listen to me today. And I think if we could all tune in to being better listeners, there'd be a lot more happiness out there. Uh, listening is an act of love. Agreed, I've completely agreed. It is beautiful. So as we, goodness me, come towards the end of the show, we've got six minutes, so we can take our time over this. This is the part of the show where each of us are gonna sort of share a tip going forward. So if you're listening in, um, listen well, listen in and think about whether these tips help you. And and usually I'm as a host is going to go first because I think it's about the segue of what Rara's been saying. You know, Rara 
has shown that she has actually created a business from nothing, a true alchemist, alchemist by listening to people and connecting people and having really powerful conversations with people, listening to their needs. And, and as she says, wrapping her love around them with kindness. And um, I suppose my tip as a, a segue, and then I'll come to you Rara afterwards, <clears throat> is, you know, let's step into that online. We're all online at the moment. Let's step away from this broadcast social media and let's step into the world where we actively listen to each other and talk to one another. It will make the world a much more beautiful place. So have the confidence to do it. Um, and it is incredible how many people do want to have those conversations with you. And don't go into it looking for an outcome of I want to have a sale. Go into it looking for a friend. And then friendships can lead, lead to transactions. There's no doubt about it. So, Rara, what would you say would be a big tip that you would enjoy passing on to our wonderful subscribers and audience? Well, as you know, Penny, I have a sort of strap line that I think is highly important, which is adversity brings you two things, a lesson and a blessing. And they normally come in that order. And as far as I'm concerned, once you get the blessing, you know where you're going. And I think that that is a spiritual end to one's existence, is basically to find yourself, you have to find your spirit and the confidence to go forward and the kindness and the love you take with you. And when you meet people, you open your heart to them because you, they just see you, and that's it. And I feel very strongly about that. That's beautiful. That actually made me tingle, Rara. Wonderful. It gave me a little tingle on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> <Thank you. Yes. laughs> Caroline, what would you say? Well, I'm feeling the tingle too, Penny. Um, I, I would say, what again, back, going back to what Rara said, um, people are thinking of setting up businesses. So if that is you, now is the time. You know, we've got a bit of time on our hands. There's never, ever, ever a perfect time to do something like this. So just gather your strength, be courageous, be confident. And it can be one little little pigeon step at a time, a turtle step till you get there. But start to think, now, you know, this is the time to do it. Make 2021 really count for you. Wonderful, wonderful. And Sam, what are your thoughts and tips for, for going forward into this week or next week? I I, I think I'm going to just second that with, yes, make 2021 the year that you change. We were just talking about change and what you need to do to put those first steps in place and have the confidence to take those first steps. So if there's things that you've always wanted to achieve, then this is the year for it. You know, there's, there's not a better time to, yes, yeah, start something new, explore new opportunities or change your life in whatever way, shape or form it is that you've always wanted to do. So make this the year of change, have the confidence to do it and find the support network that you need to be able to find that confidence and, and have some accountability or support for you. That's fantastic. And, and Kim Adele, I mean, you are an amazing leadership coach, helping a lot of corporate people through quite a maze of change at the moment. What would you say going forward to people? Um, I think for me, it comes from, from all the things you guys have been saying, but at our simplest, every single one of us wants to be listened to, understood and respected. And whether, whether we're the leader or being led, that's what we're looking for. And if we can head into our world with that view, which is it's in each of our gift to listen and to seek to understand and to respect. It doesn't mean to say you don't disagree, you just don't disrespect. And I think if we can do that, then actually we can make the world a better place and we will all grow together. And, you know, Rara, I completely agree. I think everything everything in life, not just adversity, everything in life is either a lesson, a blessing or both. And you have to look for those. And I guess, you know, I love a quote. So my final one is there's a Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lovely. Lovely. Yeah, so I'll finish just on the subject of your comfort zone. And it, they say your dreams are at the other side of your comfort zone. And Rara, it's been our absolute pleasure to have you with us today to so openly share your journey and encourage men and women, anyone that's going through challenges, to reach out, connect, 
uh, and find their path in life. And and you certainly epitomise that adversity can really bring beautiful things. And so thank you very much, Rara. Thank you all very much indeed. It's been a lovely, lovely time. Thank you for, for listening to me. Bless you. Right, so just before we finally go, if you would like to join us, if you'd like to be in the hot seat where Rara has been so beautifully for us today, then please do get in touch at www.businessblondes.tv. And in the interim, have an amazing week, everybody. Take care.